Hi, I'm Brian Carrier from Basis Technology, and I'm here today to talk about the basics of using Cyber Triage. Cyber Triage allows you to easily investigate your endpoints without needing to deploy EDR or maintain a DIY collection of tools. Let's look at how you can use it. There's three steps to the process. Step one is we're going to collect some data from a live endpoint. Step two, we're going to analyze that data with the help of the computer. And step three, we're going to make a report of the data. Let's do the installation. From the CyberTriage website, you'll get an installer. Double click on it and follow the instructions. When you run CyberTriage, it's going to ask you to configure the NSRL. The NSRL is a hash database from NIST that allows you to ignore known files from commercial companies such as Microsoft or Adobe. We recommend you use this to make your analysis more faster and efficient. You can download it from the autopsy website at this link here. Once you download it, open the zip file and navigate to it. You can also configure PSExec. PSExec allows CyberTriage to copy our collection tool to the remote endpoint and send data back for analysis. To use this feature, you have to download the PS Tools collection from Sys Internals at this link here. Download a zip file, open it up, and browse to that folder. Read and accept the UFO. Once CyberTriage is configured, we can now make our first collection. There are several ways of getting data into CyberTriage, and we'll focus today on the two most common. Regardless of the approach used, the same data is collected. We first collect volatile data, such as processes, open ports, or active network connections. We then go to the registry and the event log and schedule tasks and other places that reference either places that malware will persist or that user activity can be found. The third phase is where we actually go through the system and scan for other files that weren't mentioned in the event log or registry. That third step is the slowest, and you can disable that with this feature down here. Let's first focus on live collection automatic. In this use case, CyberTriage is going to copy the collection tool from CyberTriage to the live system. To perform a live collection over the network, choose Live Collection Automatic from Pulldown. Enter the host name. It'll then prompt you for a username, domain, and password. When you press login, it will verify the credentials, copy the collection tool over the network, and the results will be sent back over the network into CyberTriage. The other popular way of collecting data into CyberTriage is to use a USB approach. In this case, we will put the collection tool on the USB drive, insert the USB drive into the remote system, save data back to that USB drive, and then bring it back into CyberTriage. This is most useful when the computer itself has been removed from the network. If you're collecting from a remote location where it's more efficient to not send data over the network, or if you're a consultant and you aren't plugging your computers into their network. For this approach, you must first get the collection tool onto the USB drive. Choose Extract Collection Tool to Drive from the bottom here and put your drive letter in of your USB drive. Your drive now has a folder with a CyberTriage version number in it and two programs in it CyberTriage CLI, which is the command line interface, and CyberTriage GUI, which is a GUI wrapper around it. The easiest way to run this is by running the GUI program. This gives you a simple GUI interface that allows you to easily collect data and save it to either the USB drive or the remote server. To save it to the USB drive, simply press start. When the collection is complete, you'll have a cyber triage folder on the USB drive with a date timestamp and host name in it. To analyze that collected data, Bring the USB drive back into CyberTriage, choose Live Collection File, and navigate to the folder. Choose the ctoutjson file. 
under hostname and choose your malware scaling options. Regardless of how you perform the collection, data immediately starts to get analyzed once it reaches cyber triage. All the collected executables will be sent to OpsWatt for malware analysis, and other artifacts will be analyzed to determine if it could be associated with an intrusion or malicious behavior. As part of this analysis, cyber triage will mark items as bad or suspicious. Bad items are shown in their own table, and you can find the suspicious items by looking for the yellow numbers on the left. Your job is to review the bad and suspicious items and understand what happened on the system. Any of these items could be used as a starting point in your investigation, and the interface will let you pivot between different data types to understand the situation. Let's take a quick UI tour. The data types that were collected are shown on the left. Selecting any of them will show you the list of items in the table. Suspicious items are on top, and filters can be used to focus on certain subsets of that data. Selecting an item gives you more details on the bottom. The first tab shows you details about the selected item, and other tabs provide more context. The File tab will show you details about any files associated with the selected item, including all of its timestamps, malware analysis results, strings, etc. The Process tab shows you if there is an active process associated with the item, and if it has active network connections or open ports. Each tab gives you more information about each item, and you can use this area to help decide if an item is suspicious, and you can use it to further your investigation and get more clues. The top table also has columns to help you get more context about how common or rare an item is. The new column shows you if the item was in a previous collection of the same host, and the scene before column will show you how many other computers also had this item. This can help you figure out if the item is common or rare. In this case, I have a fresh database, and this is the first collection, so the numbers are all zero. The timeline in the upper right has an entry for each bad item. You can use this as context during your investigation to remind yourself when bad activity occurred on the system. The tabs on the bottom, timeline, and correlation are how cyber triage make you more efficient than using DIY text files. They allow you to much more quickly understand what is going on. Let's quickly look at some examples. The Users tab shows you what user accounts existed on the system based on Cyber Triage's registry and event log analysis. You can review this data to identify accounts that do not meet the corporate naming convention, who has admin rights, and who you do not expect to be logging into the system. From a quick review, we can detect that the Help Desk 1 account is not a typical account for our computers, it has admin access, and was created at the same time as the malware that we found. We will mark this item as bad, and you can see that the bad count has gone from 3 to 4 and is now red in the table. We can use the bottom tabs to get more information about what the user did. From the Users tab, we can look at the account's login history. But the data shows that there were no local or remote logins. So this account was created during the incident, but was not used. As another example, let's look at Programs Run. This area shows you what executables were run on the system based on registry and prefetch analysis. We can see the previous references to the malware on the system and several programs that were marked as suspicious because they were run from program data or app data. For example, we see several executions of GoToMeeting running out of app data. If this is a normal application in your environment, then you mark it as good and the suspicious counts will go down. If you frequently come across this application, you can also add it to the whitelist so that it will not get flagged in the future. As part of your investigation, you should review all of the data types and pay special attention to suspicious and bad items. Once you're done with that process, you can go to the dashboard and generate a report. This report contains an entry for each of the high, th high threat and suspicious items, and it comes in both a summary form with a sidebox object for them, or a detailed view that gives you a much more thorough view of each of the items, such as MD5 hash values uh, and date timestamps. Cyber triage allows you to more easily investigate your endpoints, identify malware, compromised accounts, and other malicious activity. You can get an eval copy from the website, or we can schedule a demo to answer additional questions. Cyber triage is also available as a team version that allows for more simultaneous collections and allows you to correlate amongst all your colleagues' cases, not just the ones that you worked on. Please let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.